Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, I'm going to talk about nine interesting Excel tricks. Now, on my channel, I've been talking a lot about Power BI, DAX, M, Power Query, that sort of stuff. I thought it'll be a nice change to talk about some fun Excel tricks. Not only these tricks are fun, but also highly useful. One trick better than the other. Why don't we actually start? Okay, so the first trick is actually a combination of two interesting tricks. Let's just say that you have some data in the spreadsheet and you want to make a chart, but you want to make a chart really, really fast with a keyboard shortcut. What you can actually do is select the data, the months column here and the product one column here, which has the values, use the shortcut Alt F1 and the chart gets created. Now I understand that you obviously get a standard column chart, but you can obviously change the chart type, convert it to a line chart and also set that chart type as a default chart type so that the next time when you press Alt F1, you get a line chart instead of a column chart. Now let's just say that in this chart maybe I forgot to add the product to data and now I would like to add it. Most people what they would do is they would just select the chart and extend the range by clicking on the mouse and extend the range and the product 2 is added to the chart. Now this is cool enough but this is only okay if product 2 is kept right adjacent to product 1. What if product 2 was maybe kept one column apart or it was kept on the other sheet? How would you quickly real quickly add product 2 data to the chart? All that you do is select this bunch of data press ctrl c including the headers go to the chart and press ctrl v and that data is quickly added to the chart all right moving on to trick number three this trick has also got to do with charts let's just say that i create uh, a chart on this data which is where i have months and the sales across months and i do some effort to format the chart make it look pretty and the title has been left aligned i have added some labels colored them blue removed the guidelines and also changed the label of the axis and stuff like that and i create another chart with a new data set using the same shortcut that i just described alt f1 and you can see that certainly this chart does not carry the formatting of this chart now i would want all my charts to have the same formatting maybe in a presentation or in a dashboard the fastest way that you can actually take the formatting of this chart and apply it to this chart is by using paste special format so the way that you do it is select the formatted chart and just press ctrl c to copy that and select the unformatted chart and use the shortcut alt es which is the shortcut for paste special and carry the formats and paste the formats on the unformatted chart and you will find all the formatting that you had done hard work is actually copy pasted to the unformatted chart and you can just do it for multiple charts at once. All right, trick number four is my absolute favorite. Whenever I do this trick and a bunch of people are standing around me, they often comment that how did you actually do that? So why don't you take a look? Generally, the way that you apply a filter on the data is by using a shortcut and applying filters to the headers of the data and then maybe picking up any particular item. Maybe let's just say that I want to filter for mark. I'll select mark and I'll say OK and the filter gets applied to the data. Now, the way that I apply filter to the data is by just selecting mark and doing this and the filter gets applied. I'll just do it once again. So let's just say that I would like to apply a filter on Bruce. I select Bruce and I'll do this. Now this is a pronoun and I'll just tell you what exactly am I doing. Now I have activated something called as an auto filter in my Excel. Auto filter simply means that I select a value in the cell and the filter gets applied by hitting a shortcut on the keyboard. Now that has to be customized into your Excel so that you're able to apply that on every single Excel file on the data set that you have. Let's just see how do we do that. So you come on the top header here which is where you also have the quick access toolbar and right here you will have a small drop down here which is where you can customize the quick access toolbar input whatever tools you need over there so I'm just going to go over to more commands in more commands I'll change popular commands to commands not in the ribbon and then in commands not in the ribbon I will go actually pick up auto filter now once you add auto filter to your list you can see that I've already added that you have to remember the sequence number of auto filter in my case the sequence is four so shapes format, align, and then auto filter. Remember that sequence because that sequence is actually going to become your shortcut. Now, once you say, okay, and this is actually customized, you can probably pick any value in the data. So let's just say that the customer VCC is the filter that I'd like to apply. Select VCC, no filters applied currently onto the data. And since my auto filter was kept on the fourth position, my shortcut actually becomes Alt 4 and the data actually gets filtered. I'll do it once again. So let's just say that I'd like to do filter for North. I select North, no filters applied on the data and I'll do it slowly this time. So I'll press Alt and you can see that number four is highlighted on the top. And as soon as I press four, the data gets filtered because you have actually triggered auto filter. Now the interesting part about auto filter is that once you apply one filter, you can actually go on to the other column also and apply another subsequent filter. So I'd like to maybe filter North and Charlie and the data actually gets filtered. 
All right, trick number five has also got to do with filters. So a lot of people already know about an interesting feature of Excel called tables. It's very easy. All that you do is select a bunch of data or just click anywhere inside of the data. Use control T to convert the data set into a table. What you get as the benefit of working with the table is that the table becomes expandable. Once you add more columns to the table, the table expands or you add more rows to the table, the table actually expands. The shortcut for creating a table is really simple. It's control T and a lot of people already know about it. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that once you actually create a table, you also have the ability to insert slicers on top of that table. This slicers adding to the table was activated, I think, after Excel 2013. So if you have Excel 2013 and beyond, you would be able to access this feature. So once I actually convert this data set into a table, I actually go to the table design tab, which is only going to be visible once you click inside of the table, not outside of the table. So table design tab, and then you can just actually click on insert slicer, and maybe I can just click on the region slicer slices are nothing but fancy looking filters and I can just click on okay the slicers that until now you were probably using with a pivot table now you can also use with a table structure and you can actually click on east to get only east data north data south data or west data and the data is actually going to be filtered now you can certainly create more slicers on more number of columns Okay, moving on to trick number six, which is again got to do with slices. This time we are headed to make our slices really pretty. Now you can actually insert a slicer on the table as we just saw, or you can also insert a slicer in a pivot table. I'm sure you know about that. But what if you wanted to make your slices really, really beautiful, something really out of the box. So what you can actually do is you can insert a slicer to begin with. So I'm just gonna make a table. This is already a table. I'll go to the design tab. And from here, I'll hit insert slicer and maybe make a slicer on the region. And I'll say, okay, and here is a pretty standard looking slicer on the region column. Now you certainly can customize that. You can also pick up some custom designs which have been created. So click on the slicer, go to the slicer. And over here you can see a lot of designs which are created. These are standard designs, but you can also create your own design. Now creating your own design is very, very cumbersome because you have to customize a lot of elements of the slicer one by one to be able to come up with a slicer that looks really awesome. Now what you can actually do is you can actually copy paste slicer designs from other people. Now I like to customize my slices when I'm creating a beautiful dashboard and I'll show you a couple of dashboards which is where I'll show you slicers they will absolutely not look like slices at all all right take a look at this Rio Olympics dashboard I created this long while ago and you can see that this is nothing but a slicer so I can sort my data by gold medals by silver medals by bronze medals or overall medals and this is nothing but a slicer certainly doesn't look like a slicer I'll show you a couple of more slicers all right this is another dashboard that I created for a cost structure visualization this is available on my blog you can actually download that on the top we have again some slices on the top and we also have slices on the left here that you can actually click and you can make use of the slicer effect now certainly these slicers are not the regular slicers that you end up getting in Excel and I have put in a lot of work to build these slicers. The point of the matter is that if you like any slicer out there that has been created by someone, you can very easily copy that design by just single click, not a single click, but a few clicks for that matter. So let's just say that you end up liking this slicer and I'm just going to maybe copy the slicer. So control C to copy the slicer. I'm back into my Excel and this is where I'll actually paste my slicer and you can see that the slicer has been pasted. Now all the formatting and the design elements of the slicer as soon as you paste it gets copy pasted inside your Excel. So when I actually click on this slicer and you go to the slicer, you can see that all the formatting that I have done with the slicer has been converted to a new style. And what I can do is I can select Select my old slicer, the standard looking slicer, go to the slicer and carry forward that formatting and paste it right here. Now all of that is applied right here. So you can see that I have a new slicer. Certainly you can just get rid of the title here, slicer settings and I don't want to show the title and I'm just going to say okay and this slicer is pretty much like any other slicer so you can actually go to my blog take a look at the dashboards that I have pick up the slices that you need go copy and paste them and then you can just get all the formatting that I have done so and you can of course delete that slicer the formatting is not going to go away all right, trick number seven is really nifty. It can help you once in a while and also clean up some really nasty data. So let's just say that you went to the internet, you copied some bunch of data and you pasted that into your Excel. But when you pasted the data in Excel, every single word came in a separate cell. And maybe you want to kind of combine all of this and put it out into a single sentence, like in a single cell, in a single sentence, separated by spaces. How do you actually do that? So what do I do? I select all of these words and then I estimate that how long will the 
sentence be if all of that was written in a single line so probably i'm assuming that it should not go beyond column g so that this text should be in a single line this sentence should not really go beyond column g that's my assumption that i make so i select the bunch of words here i select until column g now i'm just going to go to the home tab and then under fill i will click on justify and all of that is going to magically transform itself into a single cell and also spaces after every single word now sometimes people would want to do the reverse of that and break every single word into each and every cell now the answer to that is certainly not control z I, although i can do that but here is a trick that you can actually follow so i'm actually going to reduce the width of the cell here to as small as possible so that not even the single smallest word can fit in so the smallest word in this uh, entire sentence is alphabet a and i don't think in the width of column b even a will be able to fit in so that's what i do and then i select seven or eight cells here which is where all of this is going to spill in and then i'm just going to go to home tab and then under fill again i will do justify and all of that is going to fit in inside of cell by cell by cell and come into the way that it was previously was Trick number eight has got to do with sorting. So the fastest way to sort the data is by using these two particular shortcuts. Let's just say that I'd like to sort all my dates in the ascending order, smallest date first and the largest date in the end. I can use the shortcut Alt A S A and this is going to be sorted in the ascending order. Let's just say that I'd like to sort the amount in the descending order. I can use the shortcut Alt A S D and this entire thing is going to be sorted in the descending order. So two shortcuts Alt A S A for ascending order, Alt A S D for descending order. All right, trick number nine, my final trick is merge cell alternative a lot of times people would actually merge two or three cells just to make sure that the main header is in the center of the subheader you can see that we have q1 which is the main header merged solely because of the reason because i want q1 to be in the center of jan feb and march now let's just try an alternative because once the cell is merged i would not be correctly be able to apply formulas filters select the entire column and things like that so i'm just going to copy this entire thing and put it down right here and of course i will unmerge it and try to find an alternative so that i get the merge effect but the cells don't merge so i select the three cells here so the first cell the second cell and the third cell i press control one control one leads me to the format cells box and in this box i'm just going to hop over to the alignment section and over here i'm just actually going to pick up center across selection this simply means that show this in the center across the cells that i have selected i'm just going to say okay and this appears in the center but this is certainly not a merge cell now a lot of people would also actually put borders around this data just to kind of segregate that i don't know for what reason but they do that so also if you actually put borders around this data like you would expect the borders will come in the right way not across the cells that have not been merged but they have been center aligned through center across selection so, so that was a quick alternative of merging the cells all right, those were the nine tricks that I wanted to share with you. Let me know in the comments which of the tricks that you already knew and which of the tricks that you have actually learned from this particular video. I'd be eager to take a look at that. And of course, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. I'll be glad to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.